Welcome to the Armorer Store video series on the inspection, repair, and maintenance of reels. This is part two of the four-part series. Before you watch this segment, I would suggest that you have watched part one, which covers the basics of reels, how to test them, and some of the basic safety concerns about them. In part two, we are going to cover the upright reel. In a lot of places this is also referred to as a Leon Paul reel as they were the first ones to come out with this particular design. However, there are many others that have copied that design throughout the world and therefore we don't differ differentiate anymore by manufacturer but we call this, as I said, the upright reel. The particular features of this reel is the fact that it is more compact than the rest. It does stand upright and all the working parts are perpendicular to the floor. It has a cable, connector, spools, and other items on the internals that we'll get into. When working on this particular reel, you must be very, very careful because the spring pack that's on the inside, the three springs, do have a tendency to come apart. So as we get into that, we'll, we'll show you some basic safety concerns. This particular reel is very, very easy to take apart. In order to do it, all you have to do is unscrew this nut. And when that happens, then the case comes apart into two part into two halves. So on the inside, you have the cable that is held under tension. And remember, this if you watch the first segment, I showed you how this comes I can come apart and fly apart. So if you're going to work on this, you're going to go ahead and release all the tension that's been built up on the inside and stored within the springs. This particular system has three direct lines that go to the three floor connection points, four core connection points. The way that is done is this is called a commutator. Each of the wires are connected to a specific metal ring on the inside of the spool. One of the common problems with this is because you have metal copper contacts on the inside that ride on those springs, you can build up corrosion on them. It's very easy to take this. You either take a small piece of emery cloth or even a, a racer or something like that and remove the corrosion off of those contacts. Okay. Once you have this apart, in order to remove okay so this particular reel has decided that it wants me to show you how to put the reel, the springs back into the connectors you can remove the spindle or the spool which the cable goes on now when you're replacing it if you just want to Take the, you can now just take the cable completely off and then replace it. With this one, it's very easy to replace. You just feed the cable through the hole, you tie a knot in it, now there is a protective coating uh, on it, and then you just solder the particular wires to each of the connections. As I explained earlier in the introduction, this is a three, a three spring system. The way it works is each of these are stacked on top of each other and they are all connected to a small, it's in here somewhere, to a small plastic piece by means of the screw. Now commonly what happens with these is that over time if these spools go backwards and you'll put a kink into the, into the wire or they'll break at this particular point. Um, in order to connect this back up, you're going to have to put a hole through the spring in, uh, to have the screw go through. This is spring steel. It is very, very hard. You will not be able to drill through this metal. Now, there are a number of ways that you could do that, one of which would be to heat this up to what they call the annealing temperature, which takes the, the spring temper out of it. Uh, makes it softer where you can drill a hole through it. The problem is, is getting the tent, that temper back into the spring steel, which is very, very difficult unless you know what you're doing or a blacksmith or a metallurgist. 
What I discovered is a very simple tool that you can buy at Harbor Freight for about, well, when I bought it, it was about $20, probably a little bit more expensive now. And this is called a hand punch. And what this is is a device that where you punch holes through metal by means of a die and a punch. Uh, this one is fit with a 1 8 inch punch and die in it. What you do is all you do is you just take your broken end and punch the hole through it and you're good to go. Now, since this particular reel has decided to, uh, as we say, throw up its guts, part of the thing, hang on a minute before I get to working on this too much further, that stuff comes whipping out of there, so please put on some safety goggles. Uh, those of you that know me know that I, in a lot of cases, tend not to wear my safety goggles as I should. Um, and fortunately, I think we only have this one spring that's decided to, yes, great, decided to uh, throw up its guts all over the table. Uh, as I said before, each of these spring packs are stacked on top of each other. There's a square connector where they connect into each other, and that is what takes the rotary motion of this spool and uh, transfers it to each of the springs to put the stored energy back into uh, into these packs. Uh, as I said, this is what a pack would normally look like coiled up inside. And as you can see, as this spins, that spring now tightens up and that's where all your stored energy is. Uh, one of the problems that you have working with, with these is also is that there's a, a graphite grease that is put on it so your hands are going to get get kind of dirty as you uh, as you work with these. Uh, now one of the other common uh, things that are associated with each of the uh, each of these is called the spindle um, and in this particular one what you need to work on it would be a crescent wrench to be able to loosen that nut and again if we're trying to work on on this last pack uh, which I wanted to get out because there is an issue with this particular end having come loose, which will needs to be put back in so that we can make sure everything stacks up correctly. Um, as you see, there's a bent end in it. Uh, that, again, uh, if it breaks at this particular point, then you have an issue with it uh, being able to be bent. Uh, spring steel does not like to make sharp corners. Uh, I'm sure that that was that particular feature was put into the um, uh, into the end of the spring and before it was finally tempered or if it was perhaps re reworked metallurgically. So this one's going to be okay. We're not we're not going to mess with that one right now. We'll work on that at another time and place. Now, in order to okay, I'm stubborn. I'm going to work on it anyway. <laughs> Um, in order to get our sp spring that has decided that it wanted to be free back in, we're going to have to take it and as you can see it tends to coil up into a, into a ball and a mess. So you're going to want to take this and get it straightened out and we'll come back, if you come back in a few seconds we'll get all that done. Okay. So as you can see, I finally have gotten this all uncoiled. I'm going to start by placing our hook back in and then slowly winding the spring back into the container. As you can see, you feed it in.
Now one of the things that you want to notice as we get closer to the end here is that you want to make sure that you've done this in a clockwise manner, um, which is the way the spring obviously is naturally wants to coil. Again, make sure you're wearing your safety glasses because even at this point it may decide that it wants to, to spring out. Okay, once we've done that, then we put the upper portion of the, of the pack on making sure that we have access to the spindle in the middle. Okay, good. Let me uh, get this back in place. So, as I said before, we weren't going to mess with this, but we need to in order to be able to get the, the pack back to work. So, we'll work our way into it, making sure that that's seated back where it needs to go, just like that. Okay, we put our lid back on it. Now, as we assemble this back together, we slide it over the over the spindle and what we want to make sure is that on the inside that we line these up so that they sit on top of the square holes align with each other. Um, because that is what as I said before transfers in as you see here is the square hole in the bottom and it goes over this square boss on the spindle part. Alright there is our spring pack all put back together the way we need it to be. Go ahead and put that in. Tighten our nut. And again, the key to this is the fact that the nut remains fixed and the spindle is held in one particular place. And if anything can go wrong, it will. All right. Ugh. So we have that back on. Okay. And again, tighten up our, our spindle. Another finger tight. Okay. Put it back over. And then again, take our spool. Make sure that everything's on there correctly. Slip it over, okay, and put our commutator back on. And then we retension it. When I normally put about eight turns of tension on this particular reel. Put the grommet back in place. Take the upper lid and put it over top, making sure everything lines up correctly. Move the commentator around so it comes down. Everything is in place. Okay. So that's how you disassemble and work on the springs in the inner portion of this particular reel. Now, go ahead and just do a quick uh, demonstration on working on the connector. Again, because you have tension on the reel, go ahead, take some cable out, put a slight loop in it. Uh, a handy tool to have for this is an electric screwdriver uh, to be able to take the 
your um, the nuts off. Now normally we put a uh, piece of tape on the back side of that as we covered in, in section one or part one rather uh, and then we succumb to the fact and, and the realization that we are of an age and we do need other glasses to work in close quarters. So you take this out and as you see I'm, I'm using a uh, pair of pliers to hold it. You can use an uh, appropriate wrench. Um, and of course this particular reel being a uh, built by Leon Paul does have uh, standard sizes on it. I suspect that this is probably about uh, you know, probably a 3 16 size nut. So once we have all the, all the nuts removed we go ahead and we remove the retaining device which this particular one is spring loaded so it needs a little help. Remove the retaining device. Now we can take this apart. Hopefully. And once you open it up, you can see that on the inside, all your contacts have solder lugs that are associated with it, uh, as well as being uh, connected in with, um, with nuts. Now, it's easier if you go ahead and take these apart and take the nuts off in order to solder it rather than trying to work on soldering small wires down inside. What comes in handy if you watch the uh, any of the foil or the EPE repair ones is a tool that I've developed that basically is the short stubby screwdriver you find in every screwdriver set that you wonder what the heck to use it for. So this has been cut down. Now this one's been cut down to three millimeters. Why? Because that's the internal diameter of the B line on a foil. What you can do is you slip it in there and as you see it connects and holds and you don't have to worry about this slipping in and out. Okay. And then you can take uh, your wrench, undo these, take your solder lugs out, and then solder your wires. Now again, as with the um, body cord video, this one has a particular knot which is called a strain relief in the wire. Uh, it's just a straight overhand knot that keeps the wire from uh, putting all the tension on the connections here. Um, undo that knot and if you have a break in a particular wire, take that wire and pull it. Okay, And that will show you where the break is and how far you have to cut the cable back. Sometimes you'll get wear in the other ones and people have asked, well how much cable can I cut off? The cable is normally about 20 meters which would give you the entire length of a normal fencing strip plus an extra three meters or, 10, or about 10 feet. So there's about 66 feet of wire on a reel. You can cut it back maybe about another three, four feet before you really start getting into trouble. Um, but you know, by that time you're probably looking at replacing the cable. And as I said earlier, replacing the cable on this one is easy. All you got to do is undo the strain relief knot uh, remove the cable, feed the new cable through, connect up your wires, wrap it around the spool, put it back in. Very easy to do. So, again, putting this back together, just reverse order. Take your, uh, your bumper or your, your other strain relief, set it in there. This one has the clip that's internal to it. Put that on it. Slip the case cover over top of it. Yeah. And the beauty of this is, is that you don't have to put it all the way together. You can take that 
and slip it in fairly easily. And of course, these things never quite go the way you want to. Okay, there you go. Get that back on. Go ahead and put your uh, retainer clip back on. And your nuts, and then you'll be done. Okay, so that concludes our segment on the upright reels. If you have any further questions about it, you can go also refer back to my book, The Care and Feeding of All Things Fencing, Chapter 6 on Repair of the Reels. Thank you for watching, and please visit our website at www.thearmorerstore.com.